Okay, a quick video here on some sp3d2 hybridized molecules. Hopefully these are, so you're sort of getting sick of this at this point, but I just thought I'd do a couple more examples because we haven't talked about this hybridization yet. So let's look at SF6 and BRF5. So SF6, S, we're going to do the Lewis structure first. We're going to have six fluorines sitting around one sulfur. Again, obviously that sulfur isn't octeted with these bigger atoms like sulfur, phosphorus, chlorine. We're not as worried about them following the octet rule because they have those D shells to work with that allow them to do some funny things. So let's look at our total number of electrons. Six from sulfur plus six times seven from, from the fluorine for a total of 48. Keep in mind that each fluorine has eight electrons around it. One, two, three, four, five, six. 6 times 8 is 48, so that's the proper Lewis structure. What that means then is I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bonding sites for electrons. How did we get there? Well, I have my 3S shell, my 3P shell, and my D shells, which are sitting empty but are available for use. So, two electrons here, two electrons here, one and one. That's where sulfur would start. It's going to promote one of these electrons and then promote another one of these electrons, getting me up to 3sp3d2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 available spots for fluorine to bond. So now for this hybridization, we'll go down and look at the Vesper shape and we'll see the overall hybridized shape for sp3d2. In this case, I have six sites for bonding and I have zero lone pairs. So it's my octahedral shape, which shows me that I have one, two, three, four in the plane and then one straight up and one straight down. So my sulfur would have an orbital above and then these are all forming sort of a square in the plane and then one straight below and this is called octahedral. So F, 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 and F, that's what it looks like, where we would have sigma bonds to all those fluorines in all directions. So negative X, positive X, negative Y, positive Y, negative Z, positive Z. So if I were to try and draw this, S, I would have F, 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 and then I would have F out of the page, F into the page. And that's my octahedral shape with an SF6. Let's see that BRF5 is going to be the same thing, but just with a lone electron pair. So we'll work through that one now. Just got to erase all this. So Br, F5, so I need five fluorines hanging around my bromine. Octet everybody. And then count, seven plus five times seven is a total of 42. Is that right? Six times seven, yep, 42. 42. So now counting these, I have eight around each fluorine and I have five fluorines. So that's going to be five times eight or 40 electrons. I'm missing two. I'm missing two electrons from the bromine. And there we go. We put the lone electron pair. Again, as I stated in the other video, I'm going to do a separate video on formal charge just to make it clear why those electrons go on the bromine specifically. Okay. So let's look at this from our energy level diagram perspective. Again, we have our three P's, or sorry, three P's, or three S, or three P's, and then we have some empty D's to work with. So bromine to start starts like this, but we want it to be able to form five bonds. So in this case, I'm gonna promote two electrons into D shells, and then I'll hybridize. Six, 
Low on our electron pair, bonder, bonder, bonder. So there's my sp3d2 hybridization with my lone electron pairs existing on that in that orbit right there. And so now I can go down and I can compare this to the actual shape. Again, 6 with a 1. And this is going to be a square pyramid where we can see it's one of the um, it's one of the ones that's below the plane that's going to have the lone electron pair. So if I had my BR, I'd have an F above, I'd have an F to the side, F to the other side, F into the page, F out of the page, and then the lone electron pair would sit down below. That shape is called square, um, square pyramidal, because if you imagine, this looks like a square-based pyramid. And if I want to look at that from a hybridized orbital perspective, my BR would have all six of the orbits in and out of the page, um, left and right, up and down, and then the up and down one would be the one. One of those ones would be the one. Is it fluorine? Did I put fluorine? Yeah. Fluorine on the end of each one of these. The up and down one would be the one that's taking that lone electron pair. Of course, the fluorines on the outside would be hybridized as well, but I'm just focusing on the hybridization of the central molecule because that's what gives us the overall shape of the molecule. So there's a couple sp3d2 examples. And we're sort of running out of possible hybridizations, like some other funny stuff can happen, but that covers off the vast majority of molecules and why they have the shapes that they do.